Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you very much for coming. We are on the uh, lecture series, again with Gematrias. Uh, today we're going to do two. We're going to do 200, uh, again the uh, Gematria of the letter Resh, second to last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and also the number 210. We will also deal with, uh, after we deal with the uh, first thing of the um, 200. So let's begin. So the 20th letter, letter of the Hebrew alphabet is called Resh, and it has a gematria numerical value of 200. The design of the Reish represents an individual who is bent over, a poor man, which is alluded to by the word Rash, again, which is poor. The form represents the bent over head of a poor person experiencing and acknowledging his state of poverty and servitude to the worldly source of his sustenance. Now, the letter Reish also alludes to the word Rosh, which means head or beginning. Greatness begins when an individual comes to the realization that he is nothing, nothing compared to his creator. Humility allows one to reach the greatest of all heights. As we see with Moshe Rabbeinu, the greatest of all prophets, Moses, our teacher, the Torah calls him Aish Anav Ma'od, the humblest of all men. The Talmud in Peah 8.8 states that if a person does not possess 200 zuz, then he is permitted to collect from the communal charity funds. The moment a person has 200 zuz, he is no longer considered to be poor and can no longer receive assistance. Interestingly, the word tzedakah, charity, has a gematria of 199. Up until that point, 200 he already cannot take. The Talmud in Shabbos 104b states that the resh also stands for the word rasha which means an evil person. We know that when an evil person repents, does tshuva, he becomes known as a bal tshuva, a repentant, and is considered to be even higher than a tzaddik. In such a case, the resh no longer means rasha, but rosh, head. When a man marries a woman, he has an obligation to provide her with what we call a ketsuba, a document that provides severance payments should he decide to divorce her. The minimum amount that is provided for a virgin is 200 zuz. Now the number 200 zuz is, is the state of poverty in this world. Anything above 200 is no longer considered poverty. It is stated that the 200 heads of the Sanhedrin, the Jewish High Supreme Court, came from the tribe of Yisachar. The gematria of the letter Resh is 200, which is numerically halfway point of the Hebrew alphabet. Yisachar was the ninth child born to our father Yaakov. His birth is an allusion to the secret of the nine months of pregnancy. In general, pregnancy is a secret of, of the process in time. Yisachar is also known as Yodea, Yodei Bina Laatim, one who knows the understanding of time. The number nine represents the concept of emet, of truth, and the tribe of Yisachar were those who had the understanding of what the Jewish nation ought to do. Achan, Achan really, took 200 shekels of silver and other riches from Yericho, which brought about the death of 36 men in the Battle of Ai. This was the only military defeat that the nation of Israel experienced in their campaign to conquer the land of Canaan from the seven nations under the leadership of Yoshua. There's also a medrash that states that Micha's mother melted down 200 shekels of silver in order to make the idol Micha that was worshipped by the tribe of Dan. In the desert, the Jewish nation rebelled against God, saying in Shalach 14.4, Let us appoint a leader and return to Egypt. Rashi there states that the leader that they sought was an idol. The Balaturim shows this to be true with the Gematria. The first letters of the sentence describing their sin is, Ish el Achiv nitna rosh v'nashuva mitzrayma, and the first letter of the words of this statement have a numerical value, gematria of 299, which is the exact same gematria of the word avodah zarah, which means idolatry. 
There are those who say that Boaz, who was the leader of the generation mentioned in the book of Ruth, was 200 years old when he married Ruth. Avshalom, King David's son, who rebelled against his father and tried to usurp the throne, was a Nazir for life. And even though one of the prohibitions of a Nazir is that they cannot cut their hair. However, if one is a Nazir for life, they are permitted to cut their hair once a year. It is stated in Shmuel Bey's 1426 that Avshalom had long, beautiful red hair. And he would cut his hair yearly and it would weigh 200 shekels. Rabbi Yehud HaNasi was the first who lived about 100 years after the destruction of the Bayez Sheni, Second Temple, was the first to commit the oral Torah on parchment for fear that if not, it may be lost. He edited the mission approximately the year 200 CE. Now the number two implies bountifulness and blessing. Similarly, the higher orders of the number two, namely 20 and 200, also imply increase. These are the letters of the word Bechor, meaning firstborn. And as a firstborn, a male child is entitled to a double portion of his deceased father's estate. Each of the letters of the word Bechar are an allusion to this law. They are all doubled. One doubled is two, ten doubled is twenty, a hundred doubled is two hundred. In addition, if you rearrange the letters of Bechor, it spells the word Baruch, the root of the word Baracha, meaning blessings. May God continue to see us as Bani Bechori Yisrael, my first son born Israel, and may continue to shower us with blessings and with the ultimate blessing, the coming of Mashiach Sikhani, quickly and in our time. That finishes up the lecture on 200, and I uh, thought I'd continue again with the number 210, again a very propitious number. The number comes up very quickly when we stay in the book of Shemot, the second book of the Torah, also again in the first, and we'll talk about that. It is known that the Jews were in Egypt for 210 years. They were enslaved there. And God told Abraham Rabino that his descendants would be enslaved for 400 years. They left Egypt in their enslavement early, after only 210 years instead of 400. There are many reasons that are given for God redeeming them 190 years earlier. One reason given is that the servitude was much harsher than was necessary. In addition, the Egyptians worked them both day and night. Others say that the slavery was only meant to affect the men, but the Egyptians also enslaved the women. Now there are different allusions to the number 210 in the Torah. The Torah states that Yaakov went down to Egypt with 70 members of his family. The Rokeach states that the first Sedra in the book of Shemot, it mentions the 70 migrants they came down to Egypt with Yaakov three times. Three times 70 equals 210, alluding to the 210 years that the children of Israel would be in exile in Egypt. The Rokeach also mentions that the exile and the redemption are recounted in the book of Shemot and Exodus. The 200 years of exile are actually hinted at in the opening paragraph of this book, which contains seven verses and are comprised of precisely 210 letters. The number 210 also alludes to a premature birth, a seventh month baby. Seven times 30 is 210. The metaphor of birth is used to describe the process of birth, as it states in the book of Devarim 4, 34, that God took a nation from within another nation. While the birth of a nation of Israel took place, on the festival of Pesach, with their departure from Egypt, the 210 years prior to that were their gestation period. The Israelites were formed like a fetus, attached and enveloped within their host country. They had no existence to call their own. There are those commentaries that state that the relationship between Paro, the king of Egypt, and the children of Israel was that of a mother and a fetus. This may explain why when Paro was afflicted by a fatal skin disease 
and his astrologers told him that he would be cured if he bathed in the blood of young Jewish children. So what did he do? He killed 150 children every morning and another 150 children every evening and bathed in their blood. Why did he do that? So, as to, so God, in order to save the Jewish children, God cured Paro of a skin disease, which makes no sense. Why save Paro? God just should have allowed Paro to die, and that would have ended the killing of the Jewish children. The answer seems to be that the relationship between Paro and the Jews was that of a mother and a fetus. If you kill the mother, you kill the fetus. So God had no choice but to cure Paro to save the Jewish children. In the beginning of the Pesach Haggadah, it begins with the words, Halach Ma'anya. This is the bread of affliction. The gematria of the word Lach Ma'anya is 210. Now, just like God redeemed our forefathers from their exile, quickly and before the set time that was mentioned, may you do the same for us and bring Mashiach Zekenu quickly and in our time. Again, thank you very much for coming. God bless and be well. Shabbat Shalom.